complexity of computing a bisimilarity pseudometric on probabilistic Um So, uh, as most of you probably know, uh, Professor has done a, a lot of work on uh, bisimilarity pseudometric. So, uh, since we've got some results in this area, it seems only fitting to, to present them here. Um, so, it's joint work with the previous speaker, uh, James. Um, so, um, it is to um, look at the complexity of computing a particular uh, bisimilarity pseudometric equation automata. Um, be before I come to the pseudometric, let me just briefly review what are probabilistic automata and uh, what is bisimilarity in the system. So, so, this is a, a, a probabilistic automaton. Um, as you can see, uh, step one has these two outgoing edges, so if there are two probabilistic transitions, and if you choose them, you make a, a non-deterministic choice. So if you pick, for example, this, this tran probabilistic transition over here, what happens is that you end up in state 3 with uh, probability 1. However, if you, if you pick this one over here, this is a probabilistic transition, so you really have a, you have a choice. So if you pick this transition, you have the probability half, you end up over here, and with probability half, you end up in the other state. And these two just make itself look to themselves. This one makes a, a similar transition. Um, and the, um, the, the, the colors um, of the, the states uh, capture how the states are labeled. So these are the, the atomic propositions that hold in the in, in this state. So these capture what, is, what type of properties these different states have. So now, once you have such an automaton, yes. Yeah. Labels on the transition? There are no labels on the transition. No. We have just labels on the, on, on the states. We can more or less map the one model into the other and vice versa, so it doesn't really matter much. Okay, so now once you have such a system, you're interested in which states behave the same, so many of these bisimilarity notions have been introduced. Um, so now I look at a slightly different uh, system, because as you can see, 3 and 4 have the same color. So first of all, we can look at, at F3 and 4, so they have the same label, so in that sense, locally they're the same. And if you look at their behavior, they just make a loop with probability 1 to themselves, so that more or less captures that they, they, they behave the same. So these two are, are bisimilar or equivalent. So now let's compare 1 and 2. So here we have different choices of non-determinism, so you can choose one transition or the other. So for example, if, if this transition makes, sorry, if this states, make this transition over here, you can mimic it by taking this transition over here and it goes to the same state. Um, now when we come to the other one, uh, so we have this transition over here, uh, you wonder, you know, can we match it by this one over here? So you, the idea here is that you're not interested in what is the probability of going to an individual state, but you're interested in what is the probability of going into an equivalence class of states. Now since I already mentioned the 3 and 4 behave the same, they're considered equivalent, so they form an equivalence class. So as you can see, if I pick this transition, then I go with probability 1 to this equivalence class, and that can now be matched by this transition over here, which goes also with probability 1 to that equivalence class as well. Okay, so this is notion for probabilistic uh, automata was introduced by this person. We recognize me who he sits. You do, so. <laughs> Uh, yes, this is Roberto Sagana who introduced this, this notion. Um, so now let's have a look at a, a, a slightly uh, different automaton. So as you can see, um, the probabilistic transitions from these and these are, are almost the same, but what we do is we, we modify them by, by a small uh, amount, uh, a positive amount. Um, so now, in this particular case, since, by the way, as you can see, 3 and 4 are of different colors, so they're, they're not equated, they're not in the state equivalence class. So when I want to, to match this transition with another transition, well, this is the only option I really have, but then these two numbers are not exactly the same, and these are both are, are, are separate equivalence classes, so they're not uh, bisimilar. Um, so the, the, the problem is that this notion is, is not robust, meaning that if you make really small changes to some of the probabilities that are uh, captured in the system, then states that are bisimilar might become not, or vice versa. Uh, and furthermore, generally when we, when we come up with such a model, these numbers that we find are usually uh, obtained by uh, just looking at the system that we want to model. So you get them experimentally, 
be, and they might not be exactly what they detect. They might not be precise, they might be approximation. So this notion is it, it's not robust. Uh, you know, uh, something that was observed first by, who knows, it's Prakash, do you know? Yes, that's Volta. Exactly. Uh, so in collaboration with uh, Jacqueline and Zhu, Smolka uh, uh, showed this um, in, the, uh, in the arena. So um, he suggested that rather than using equivalence relations, let's, uh, let's use pseudometric. So the idea is that so one way to, to view an equivalence relation is just <coughs> in pair states, it tells you whether the pair is in the equivalence relation, yes or no. So it's a Boolean, right? True or false. So now you want to. Sorry, Frank. Yes, go ahead. We confused. They are not by similar even for epsilon equals zero, right? Sorry, I'm not lost in your example. Because you change the colors. If that's only the zero, then they're going to the most identical transitions. So yeah, but three and four are not quite small, so. Yeah, but I mean, this one goes with the probability you have to the purple state, and this one does as well, right? <coughs> one, the one or two, I think. I mean, maybe. He's talking about by similarity of one and two. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, thank you. All right. Uh, where we are? Okay, here. So, okay. So now what we want to do is we want to, to add a little bit more structure here because this is not enough. So instead, what we have is we have a, a function that to every pair of states maps it to let's say we we, we pick the, uh, the the unit interval, and the idea is that the distance captures how similar states behave, where distance zero means that they behave exactly the same, whereas it is one that they behave completely different. So equivalence is now captured by, by distance zero. So it gives you a nice quantitative generalization of this notion of, of behavioral uh, equivalence. So now what we like to do is um, come up with a pseudometric that captures um, the be behavior equivalence of these uh, automata, and remember that they have both non-determinism and probabilistic, probabilistic choices as well. So all those will split into two. So first of all, if we start with non-determinism, um, uh, usually they're, they're modeled by, by, by subsets, right? So um, a natural way is now to look at uh, a distance function on, on subsets of a particular set. So this is one. Um, and um, so just to, to give you an idea also, what this is generalized is so um, again think of this so this max is on the on the unit interval so you can see that as well as a, a generalization of conjunction similarly if you take a max over set it's more like a, a universal quantifier min is going to be like an existential quantifier so if you look at this formula what does it say it says for all a there exists a b and for all b there exists an a so hopefully those are any tricks that this might be something with, with bisimilarity, right? So you're, you're just, you know, for every transition that the one system can make, I can find a transition that matches it and vice versa. All right, so uh, this, this, this was introduced by... No? Give one of the other students a chance. Well, how about you? How about you? How about you? Okay, so this is the one that we're going to use for, for, for non-determinism. Uh, so, uh, again, we also want the distance function on, uh, for probabilistic choices, which are naturally modeled by a probability distribution. So we use probability distributions on a particular set. And so now this is the, uh, the distance function that, we're, uh, that we could use. Um, I won't go into all the details here. Uh, so we have a metric space over here. These are all the non-expensive functions. And then this is more as this is very much like an integral to, to look at the difference between the two. But I'll, I'll show you in, in a minute an example for a much simpler system that at least you hope, hopefully you get a, a feel for why this, this, this notion of distance is, is related to uh, probabilistic by similarity. But first, I mean, let everybody know who actually introduced this. this <laughs> Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, so the distance function was, was, was uh, uh, I think, they came up with this notion in the, in the early 40s, but it was reinvented many, many times in the 60s, the 70s, I think even in the 80s. And you, you, you find it under 
many, many different names. The Wasserstein metric is, is more or less the same distance function. Uh, the Hutchinson metric is the same distance function, and so on. And uh, so it makes it sometimes tricky actually to find results in the literature because you have to know which name to look for. It's not always easy. Um, it, it is also very nice for you in the literature because you can actually publish papers about the same thing over and over again. So <laughs> an algorithm to compute, and then you just put in the name or the metric, whatever you like, and accept it again. Anyway, um, all right, I was, I was going to give you a simple example. Uh, so we have the two states, and as you can see, there's a, a uniform distribution. There's no null determinism at the moment because we're only interested in probabilities, right? So you, you have this, this, this situation, and you have this other state over here. And so now these states are uh, probabilistic by similar if you can find more or less a one-to-one -one mapping how you reorder them so that these pairs over here become uh, probabilistic by similar as well. So really what it is is so you have to find a permutation, pi, such that si and its corresponding pi i of the, the other system are probabilistic uh, by similar. So now if we look at the... Um, the cut of his distance on these two uh, distributions, then we have a, we can characterize it as follows. Uh, so again, as you can see, uh, the permutations are over here, right? Um, the existential becomes a, a minimum. And here we want that all of them are related, so that you can do with a, a weighted sum, right? So you, you get something over here. And again, remember that the distance between two states captures their, their similarity, right? So obviously, if all these are zero, then uh, it means that we can find actually uh, a permutation in that. So, it, I hope it gives you some idea of how it actually is, is, is closely related to probability uh, by similarity. So we have a, a distance function for non-determinism. We have a distance function for uh, probability. So what can you do? You can, of course, uh, uh, combine the two. Uh, and that was done by. I think I think uh, some people in the audience might know the answer. <laughs> so this is what I could reach out together with uh, some of her, her colleagues. So they, they combine the two distance function and then obtain uh, a distance function on these uh, probabilistic automata. Um, and they also proved among I mean they proved a number of of properties in, in that particular paper, but uh, also that probabilistic by similarity is nicely characterized by this distribution in the sense that you know distance zero if and only if the states are probabilistic by similar. So now you have this nice nice distance function that has nice properties, it captures probabilistic by similarity. So you might be interested in can I compute it? Um, and so uh, the problem that we worked on was how hard is it to actually uh, compute this, this distance function. So our, our, our result is, is, is the following. So the, the problem of computing this distance function uh, is in the complexity class called uh, PPAT, which is polynomial parity argument in a directed graph. Uh, I won't give you the... for polynomial Oh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> uh, so I, I won't give you the, the, the definition. Um, I'll probably screw it up anyway. Uh, but let me just mention a few uh, problems that are uh, in this, this class as well. So first of all, computing Nash equilibria of two-player games is, is complete for this, this class. Um, computing the value of uh, simple stochastic games, a problem that people have been looking at for quite some time, is, is, is in this class as well. And for example, computing fixed points of, of these Brouwer functions is, is in the complexity class as well. So. Um, so what I want to do is, in, in the remainder of the talk, so in the next 10 minutes or so, at least give you a, a part of the ingredient of how we actually improve this result, which in itself actually, I think, is a, is a neat result as well. So for that, we take a few steps back. So let's look at uh, ordinary label transition systems. So we have just non-determinism, uh, and of course, there you have the, the classical notion of bisimilarity, and this notion of bisimilarity can be characterized in different ways. So first of all, as we all know, there's the hennessy milner logic. Um, you can characterize it as a, at a great fixed point. And there's also a, a game characterization for, uh, for this notion as well. So now if we, if we move over to probabilistic automata, we can look at probabilistic by similarity, ordinary notion. And then it can be captured by means of a, a logic. So again, you can show that two states are probabilistic by similar if and only if they satisfy exactly the same uh, formula. 
And there's a, a fixed point characterization as well, which was already given in, in uh, Roberto's uh, thesis. So now, moving from this, this discrete notion of probabilistic bisimilarity, you can go to pro these probabilistic uh, bisimilarity pseudometrics. And again, there's a, a logical characterization. This time you have a logic, and when you interpret the formulas, you, you, you get numbers, so elements of, of, of the um, uh, and there's also a, a fixed point characterization. This is actually how the, uh, the distance function was uh, uh, defined. So what is missing is a, is a game theoretic uh, interpretation of, of this notion. So what we've uh, shown is that, um, so if you, if you look at the distance of two states of a probabilistic automaton, then you can actually capture this as the value of a, a simple stochastic game. So this more or less gives you a, a game theoretic characterization of both ordinary probabilistic bisimilarity and also of this, uh, this pseudo-metric as well. All right, so now I hope I'll, I'll, I can give you some idea of, well, first of all, quickly show you what is a simple stochastic game for those who don't know, and then sketch more or less how we can actually capture the distance in such a game. So this is a, a simple stochastic game. So there are two special, uh, so it's a directed graph, there are two special uh, vertices, one is labeled zero, one is labeled one, they've done, so they're and then all the other um, vertices have two outgoing edges, uh, and we distinguish three different types. So we have a, a max node, a min node, and an average node. And it's a, it's a two-player game, so let's call them max and min. So you start in some uh, start vertex, and then depending, so if it's a, a max node, then the max player decides which of the two to, to choose, the min player of uh, the min node, then the, the min player will decide. And when you're in an average node, it, it's more random. So with 50%, you go in one direction, with 50%, you go in the other direction. Now, the objective of the max player is to maximize the probability of, of reaching this state over here, and the, the min player does more or less the opposite, right? So it either tries to reach state zero or just make sure that the game goes on forever. So now the next thing that we want to do is, is see whether we can capture the distance uh, in this particular way. So let's now let's look at, uh, at some more, more details over here. So the distance, remember, is the, the defined in two things. This this outdoor distance and this outdoor distance. So the distance between two states is, and this here, uh, hopefully you, 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 you recognize again, this is max or max min. So this is the outdoor distance. And then here, these are the distributions. So it says that you can go from the state S, you can go to a bigger, the, the transition, a non longer distance, pick one, to some distribution, and this one as well. So the idea is now, is that what we're going to do is, um, we're going to introduce for, um, for every pair of states, we're going to introduce a, a, a vertex in our, in our game. Okay? And this is going to be uh, a max node. And um, so now what we can do is we can make a, um, So, so this one over here corresponds to a, a transition from T to mu, and this one corresponds to comes from S to mu. Right, so, so this, as you can see, and then this node over here should capture uh, the value of this part of the expression. So this week we're now going to make min nodes, and then we're going to do the same thing again. Right? So this is going to be a min node, and this is going to be a min node as well. Uh, and then we get transitions to uh, So that's the, the, the next level that we get. So now what we have to do still is we have to capture what is the value of this, which corresponds now, of course, to the, this distance between these two distributions, which is the Kaparov's distance, which is defined like this. But this doesn't work really well. So what we do is we just use duality. Uh, so we just want to flip everything around. Um, so there's a duality theorem uh, due to Kaparov and Rubenstein. And so as you can see, the max turns into a min, and then uh, things change a little bit. Uh, is this closely related, by the way, to the, uh, um, the duality theorem that you find in, uh, in linear programming? All right, so most of it looks okay, but of course this we, we still need to, to define. So what it is, is this is the, the set of, of couplings of these two distributions. 
And what is it? Uh, is it coupling more or less? It's uh, uh, the, the combined. Uh, so more or less, you have a you have a distribution on S, you have another distribution on S, and how do you combine them in a way, right? So you get a, it, 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 uh, a joint probability on S times S, where um, these are the, uh, the equation that actually captures this. So now the, the the nice thing about it is this is a complex polytope, and um, so of course it will be it has infinite many elements, but uh, luckily it has only finitely many vertices. So how can we use this now? Well, so by the relative we get this equation over here, but since this is a, a linear function, and we know that the linear function uh, it takes its minimum at, at, at the vertices, so what we need to do is we only have to consider the vertices, and they're finitely many, so that makes it uh, makes life much better. So what we really get here is, um, as you can see, it's a uh, it's a sum, and then these are the, by the way, these are generally, when, when all the probabilities in the system that you start with are rationals, these will be rationals as well. So you get more as a sum of this. So this you can more as describe by a, a gadget that consists all of average nodes. I mean, uh, so these are average. And then, as you can see over here, uh, again, we have the distance on these, these states again. So we, we get back to, so, uh, of course, I mean, the, gra the graph would have a a cycles as well, right? So, ST might actually appear over here as well. Okay, so, um, so this shows that, that what, is what we can do is we can, we can now express the, um, the distance function in, in terms of uh, such a simple stochastic game where uh, the value assigned to, to, to this, this particular the vertex actually exactly captures uh, the distance between this this <coughs> uh, You mentioned that there, that there might be a, an ex exponential blow up though. Uh, it's simply because uh, this over here might be, <coughs> might be exponentially larger than uh, what we uh, started. So some of you might have already noticed this. Every time when I go to the pictures, I say, this is not the rational algorithm. So this was in, uh, I think it was 2001. Oh, 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 <laughs> exactly. That's what I, so I, I gave a talk about you know, how to use coalgebras in order to define certain metrics. And throughout the, the, uh, the talk, uh, I had pictures of this particular person, sometimes looking extremely puzzled. That was the, the, the slide where they said, you know, these are coalgebras. Um, but towards the end of the, of the talk, um, uh, the point sign was that our algorithm was a uh, polynomial type. So, as you can see, that was really good because it turned out that the algorithm that Prakash had published a couple of years earlier was actually, was not, it was not a polynomial type. Uh, and ours was, so that was really good. Now, um, so what turned out to be the case was that um, on the slide I also mentioned the related word and Prakash's uh, name just ended up right under the, the picture. <laughs> yeah, he has reminded me of that many, many times. <laughs> so um, so just, to make, just to make sure that I, I, I never ever use that slide again, <laughs> I figured I might as well give it to you. So. <laughs> You never ever want to look at that slide again. Um, and um, so, Joel actually showed a, a picture of you from a long time ago. And Ben showed you a picture from yesterday. But I do a little bit better, you know. I give you the picture that, that is just taken. <laughs> All right, so that, that actually concludes uh, my talk.
um, behavioral similarities are continuous with Bayesian updates or things like this? What the hell is Algebra about? I will not talk about that, although that would be very nice to have. Because that's the, that's the logical, I mean, it's actually logical math stuff, right? If you have robust math. Right. Yeah. Very good. So, I mean, why are you attempting to calculate the distances exactly? I mean, would the algorithms be better if you tried to calculate the distances approximately? Be better. I have no idea. Could be. I mean, it's the robustness argument biting you back on it. Yeah. Well, it seems that we can do some kind of. There have been some some iterative algorithms. It seems that this type of algorithms might be applicable in this sense. Uh, but it seems also that um, actually the, <coughs> the, the complexity theory result, actually, which, which captures this, this p-pad, uh, gives us some hints on, on how to actually we might be able to, to approximate the distance. I mean, the, the, yeah, so the, the algorithms work by uh, approximating until you get close enough and then rounding. So the exact, the exact algorithms are, are, I guess, approximation and then do some rounding. So, yeah. so I guess they're very 